everybody! So today I'm back and today I'm going to be doing my book haul for the month of May. Now today's a really interesting one because there's stuff going on at the minute which basically means that I'm stocking up on a load of books for the next few months. So that means I'm buying a lot. But I'm also taking a lot of proof copies which means at the minute I'm actually taking some books that I kind of maybe wouldn't look at reading normally. Just to kind of stock up a little bit. So today's is a huge huge book haul. So without further ado, I'm going to get straight into showing you what I've got over the past month. As usual with one of my book hauls then, there is a significant amount of non-fiction. Now actually this month there's a lot less non-fiction than other genres, but we'll get to that later. For now, the non-fiction I've bought starts with The Evolution of Everything by a guy called Matt Ridley. So this is a book that just completely caught my eye in the hardback. And basically it goes over kind of 14, 15 different themes, things like democracy and science and basically just chronicles the evolution of that idea and how it's changed over time and what it started out as and what it means nowadays. And it's just a really interesting new take on history and kind of popular science and smart thinking. Sounds like a really interesting way of doing it. It's just really caught my eye and I can't wait to give that a read. Next up, we're crossing over to history, a little bit more obviously history, and it's Germany by Neil McGregor. So recently on this channel, I talked about a book called SBQR by Mary Beard, which is quite an in-depth history of the earlier part of the Roman Empire and the Roman Republic. And it's got a very well-written style and it's quite, uses a lot of sources and a lot of quite visual representation. And this is very similar, but for the country of Germany, straight through from its, um, it kind of its inception and when it was first created right through to now. Neil McGregor's a radio historian, he's done a lot of stuff, but this uses an absolute ton of images and illustrations and just really interesting different types of historical sources and I think it's one that's just going to be really interesting to read. Continuing the trend of very very different books, next is Living on the Volcano which is a book about football and in this case it's kind of part biography, part kind of football writing and it's about the kind of experience and the tribulations of being a football manager, what it takes to succeed, those kinds of things. So it's really interesting, it kind of covers the interesting parts of different people's lives and it's just supposed to be brilliant. It's got a lot of um, nominations for awards and it's just one again that's really caught my eye. And then the next one is actually a really good one and that this is one that I talked about in my last video which was my top five books for summer 2016. The ones I was most excited about and this was the first book I talked about on there. And luckily, within days of doing that video, a copy has arrived for me. So that's Straight Jacket by Matthew Todd. So this is the editor of Attitude magazine. And it's basically looking at the links between mental health and LGBT people. And just the way they interweave and the way that LGBT culture can kind of almost provoke mental health issues. It's supposed to be really, really fascinating. It's supposed to be very well written, and I'm just intrigued to give it a read. Something completely different to anything I've really ever read before. So as you can see, my non-fiction is a lot less extensive than normal. And now we're going to move on to some of my fiction stuff I've bought, which is basically the whole bulk of the rest of this video. First up is a crime thriller I've bought. Again, it's just one that's kind of caught my eye. I recalled it in the hardback and it's just come out in paperback and I thought I've not read a crime thriller, especially anything psychological, in a very long time. I saw a man by Owen Shears. So literally, and I kid you not, I know basically nothing about this book. I'm assuming someone sees a person at some point, but basically it just sounds like a really interesting, gripping psychological thriller. The next one is technically classified as YA, but kind of is YA fantasy crossover. And it's one that I've eyed up for a long time. It's the exact kind of thing I'd have read when I was younger. It's called Riverkeep by a guy called Martin Stewart. And this is an advanced copy we got through at the um, Shopper Workout. It's just a really interesting kind of naval fantasy. A lot of it's based around water and boats and rivers and kind of bits of steampunk elements. But it's just a really interesting perspective for a YA fantasy especially. A lot of that has got a very specific type of fantasy, whether it's Harry Potter style or kind of that kind of magical. This is completely unusual, and it just, I think it's one that I'll really enjoy. I don't know, I'd have devoured it when I was younger. Carrying on with the fantasy bint, Uprooted by Naomi Novik. So this has recently won, if I remember rightly, I think it may be the Arthur C. Clarke Award. It's basically won one of the big fantasy sci-fi awards over the past few months. And it's just a really interesting twisted take on some traditional fairy tales. It's got a lot of the kind of common tropes of fantasy fiction, but it does it in a really unusual way. And it just sounds, from the cover and the way it's described and the fact it's won so many awards, like something I know I'll really enjoy. I like that kind of vaguely twisted, unusual take on the standard stereotypes of a genre, and this sounds like it does that perfectly. 
Next up is another one of those kind of random pickups. I didn't know much about, but it was a free copy we came in and it sounded really interesting. It's called Hex. So, literally, all the cover of this says is Evil doesn't sleep, it waits. And straight away, I don't read that much horror fiction. I'm more than a bit of a wimp. But I just thought, it's not that I've done much. It's a really interesting looking book, the way they've done it. It's kind of historically set through to the modern day from what I've worked out. It's just a really interesting type of horror fiction. I'm looking forward to giving that a read. It's something a bit different to anything I've read in a very long time. The last horror book I read literally is about three years ago. So I'm looking forward to getting a new one to get my teeth into. Now I've kind of dialed back on the manga that I buy recently because I found it's... I read it too quickly, really. It's just so quick to get through. But there is Death Note, which I am still, still plodding through and trying not to finish too quickly because I love it so much. So Death Note Volume 5, the Black Editions, is also on my list. Uh, this is the penultimate volume, so I'm going to again try not to read this too quickly because I just don't want the story to end. On to general fiction then. This next one is quite possibly the most beautiful proof cover I've ever seen in my life. I knew nothing about this book. I, you can't really tell anything from the jacket, but as soon as it came in, as soon as I opened up the envelope and saw this inside, I knew I was going to read it. It's called The Countenance Divine, and as you can see, it's beautiful. I'm going to cover my face with it because it's definitely more attractive than my face, and literally amazing job whoever designed this cover. It tells you a little bit about the book, actually having read it, it is very representative of the novel itself. But it's just so eye-catching and interesting, and if this is anywhere similar to the final cover of the book, it's going to do so well based on this alone. But basically it's just a really interesting fiction set over four periods, from 1666, 1777, 1888 and 1999. It's kind of described as a cross between Hilary Mantel and David Mitchell. As far as I'm concerned, can't go far wrong with that pair. So that's strong, strong advice to start with, and with a cover like that I just couldn't say no. So the last five books that I got this month are kind of tied in something I talked about in my book haul last month, which was about the Wuthering Heights copy I was reading, and the beautiful Penguin Modern Library, Penguin English Library, that's the one, Penguin English Library editions that they've released. They released them a few years ago, 80-something books with these beautiful illustrated covers, and I kind of got a bit carried away. And this month I bought five um, to go with my Wuthering Heights one, so we've got Alice in Wonderland, The Invisible Man, and The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, Heart of Darkness, Joseph Conrad, and The Monk by Matthew Lewis. Now, I'm going to slowly flick through these as I talk, because they are just beautiful covers. Every single one offers something completely different, and is just absolutely gorgeous. And I'm hoping to get the full set. Um, and I quite like that a lot of them are really slender, so you can read them literally. I've had a couple long train journeys recently. You can just blitz through one in that one short space of time. And it's such a pleasure to do it that way. Um, they're just gorgeous editions. I really hate when you hit the full set. I've got quite a few more on order that I'm due to collect in the next few days. And I just can't wait. It's going to be something I've wanted to do for so long. I've really wanted to read more classics. And I've struggled to find the motivation to do it. Wuthering Heights has been my way back into it. And then these beautiful editions. And I cannot wait to expand my repertoire of really, really good classic literature beyond basically the two books that I've read in the past. So, only way is up from here, but these are a great way of getting started with that. So there you have it, that's my book haul for the month of May. That's 15 books. That is literally like two months worth of reading I bought in one month, and that doesn't bode well for my reading habits. So, literally, if you could see my bookshelves at the minute, I am overflowing to the extreme. So, I'm really excited to get through some of this stuff and hopefully this will mean I won't have to buy too many more in the next few months. As always, any comments you've got for any recommendations down below would be wonderful. I'm not going to try and buy too many, but I always succumb to buying a few. So whatever tips you've got for those would be great. And obviously if you've read any of these, you've got any suggestions for which are the classics I should read first as a kind of easy way into reading that slightly more archaic style, that would be a huge help. So I don't just buy them all and not read them, which is a strong chance, let's be honest. As always, a like and subscribe is really appreciated as well. I've just recently gone over 500 subscribers and I'm so proud to have got to this point. It's completely all down to you guys. It's massively appreciated. I've got something coming up in the next few weeks, which I'm just putting the final details on as a kind of thank you to you guys for that. But keep your eye out for that and obviously continue to hit that like button. It really means a ton to me. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon with my next video.